Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Let's speak about the front lines here. There is no change for today, so let's go to some of the news and events straight away. Yes, those are Russians and they fly DJI Mavic, um, the simple remote control and they use probably iPhone there. And Ukrainians move that drone uh, away. Oh, we have a very interesting person here. So he's from Rusich, a Russian neo-Nazi battalion, and he's kind of famous figure. He gave some of the interviews actually openly saying that he's Nazi. Я нацист. Я не буду углубляться. Националист, там патриот, имперское направление и так далее. Я прям говорю, я нацист. Можно руку вскинуть. And he used to kill many men and also dogs. I don't know why. So we used the special equipment to drag Russian drones away to cause them just to land. And after that, we're going to capture them and just remote controller stays with that soldier. He's very concentrated, but no, cannot control it. No, my friends, it's not iPhone. It's some kind of Android phone. And the soldiers say that this Mavic was Prashiti. Prashiti means that it was hacked. Uh, they installed a special software for it not to be hacked uh, from outside, but still Ukraine used the special anti-drone rifles to target Russian drones. And Russians also use that stuff as well, but we have European-made stuff which is more effective compared to Russian equipment. And I'm quite surprised to see that Nazi guy from Russian side. I thought he's dead already, but you know, he's fighting here in Ukraine. And obviously Ukrainian army will not let him to live for a long time. It is now being confirmed that the self-proclaimed leaders of Crimean Peninsula send their families away from Crimea itself and Aksonov, the leader of Crimea that Russia put there, is not an exception. Putin is planning to increase the number of soldiers located in Ukraine from 160,000 to 250,000, so increase by 90,000 soldiers. It is very significant, but those soldiers are mostly volunteers with no real military experience and obviously someday long time ago they went to the army for one year or a little bit more but still they are not trained as regular russian military so basically meat will be delivered to the front lines but my friends as i say you always do not underestimate your enemy we still have to break down russian army here in ukraine and drive them away and it would cost us a lot of losses as well but we don't have the other choice my friends we have to fight for our land otherwise russia will just slave us here so glory to ukrainian army ben hedges uh, the commander of the united states forces in europe say that ukraine will throw russians away until the 24th february borders till the end of this year well i hope that we'll have enough weapons to do it uh, because we are still waiting for the massive delivery from united states of america and i hope that this autumn will be dry and warm for us to make it happen otherwise ukrainian counterattack would not be possible until spring 2023 by the way my friends today is the day of ukrainian aviation civilian and military i'm very happy to be part of that activity i spent all of my life on that stuff and i hope to fly again and our pilots engineers and all of the guys who serve in our air forces doing what they can to return peaceful skies to ukraine so thank you so much my friends who serve there for protecting us. It seems that Russia is sending more forces to Crimea and after it they will send it to Ukrainian occupied territories in Kherson Oblast and not only and many of the tanks were spotted T72 and T80, 152 mm and 122 mm Mesta as self-propelled artillery systems, armored vehicles and engineering vehicles were spotted on a railroad so Russia mainly used the railroad to move their troops around.
This is the satellite image of the Antonovsky bridge. Sorry, my friends, I was wrong in my previous video. It seems like the DIY ferry bridge is still intact. Here you can see the ferry that Russia used to transport the vehicles from one shore to another across the Dnieper River. But here you can clearly say that Antonovsky bridge is totally unusable and we're gonna get rid of the DIY bridge very, very soon. We have Hammers artillery working on that. Good news coming from United States. Again, Ministry of Defense will give $182 million to get NASAM's anti-aircraft and anti-rocket systems to deliver them to Ukraine. It is the part of the great deal that was signed by the Joe Biden recently for the almost $3 billion help to Ukraine. So it is the part of that help. Previously, we were promised two of that systems and now six will be delivered and one of the system may cover one city. It is not a long range system. However, as for middle range, it is the best one. We're going to also check the German made RST that will be delivered to Ukraine in a few weeks. They look the same, but I think Nassam's is a little bit better, uh, but practice of course will show the result. Yesterday we got the information that Serbia is pushing their forces near to Kosovo border. I was very concerned about that stuff, but in a while after talks between Kosovo and Serbia, they decided to calm down a little bit and uh, Serbia cancelled the special papers for the guys from Kosovo to arrive to Serbia and Kosovo cancelled the special number plates for the cars or something like that. So now the piece is for a long time there, I hope. This is the Toyota Land Cruiser, the police car of one of the chiefs in Berdansk. It's the occupied city by Russia and uh, this guy was under attack, let's say it was the directed explosion on that car and the chief the deputy chief of the local police lost his life so he betrayed ukraine and here is his punishment it seems like russia is moving out their s-300 anti-aircraft systems from syria so before we can see on the satellite image there are some of the systems there and now it is empty probably they need those to protect crimea or maybe belarus or even russian territory ukraine will get six underwater drones from great britain you may call them submarine drones or something like that i don't know how we can use them probably to demine uh, their waters near to ukraine and yes it is confirmed yes it's for the mine purposes i think we may also get manta drones with a range up to 3000 kilometers so you can reach all across the black sea several times it's been reported today that russia already used around 55 percent of their rocket ammunition and for the calibers for the cruise missiles that they use uh, mostly from their ships so they have around 20 percent left still they have lots of h 22 and s300 anti-aircraft rockets but they configured them for the ground rockets and sometimes they fire those uh, for our civilian objects and military as well and because of that russia started to use more rocket artillery systems like Uragan or Smirch. Now, Ukraine doesn't have any kind of cruise missiles, but we have anti-ship missiles, Neptune, that were used to sink down the Russian flagship Moskva. And now we also have Harpoon rockets that probably were used to target the Russian airfield in Saki. Uh, the best rockets for us could be attack amps that will obviously have with United States help. Be aware the emerging alliance between Russia and Iran. On Opinion magazine we have this article. They say that Russia already got the drones from Iran and the drone pilots already did their trainings attending Iranian military bases. We're gonna see if that may change the situation here in Ukraine. So far, as we know, those drones are not used here. If Iran gave those drones to Russia, it means that there will be sanctioned 
even more by United States. But now it's a big game between United States, Iran and Russia. Obviously, United States are pushing Iran a little bit to increase the oil producing. They need to lower the oil prices globally and that will make Russia suffer. Also, Iran may help Russia to avoid some of the sanctions. We know that Russia is the most sanctioned country nowadays. Iran is still under the sanctions, but they have some of the products that they can deliver or exchange for Russia. And also they can provide some military force if it's confirmed that they send drones to Russia. We're gonna see it in the future anyways. It's unconfirmed information for now. I think it's just uh, rumors that we, there are some signs that Russia put tactical nuclear weapons to Crimea, but I wouldn't trust it. Otherwise, United States and many other countries obviously would target that one. I mean, not uh, literally target, but they will put attention on that topic. We don't see any voices coming from their side so far. Little by little, Russia is moving out their military jets from Crimea because they lost the Saki base and recently they reduced their aircraft number in Crimea for 20%. That is the huge number, obviously, but anyways, we're gonna reach that military airfields in Crimea for sure, I think with attack and rocket. Slovakia has signed the deal with Poland and Czech Republic to protect Slovakian skies and that is why they will send MiG-29s to Ukraine. Finally they signed the agreement and I hope in a few weeks we're gonna receive those MiGs because it was announced like two months ago or something that they will give us uh, those fantastic jets but so far we don't have them in our army and we are eagerly waiting for them. Thank you, Slovakia. This is how the biggest market in Europe looks like. It was in Kharkiv, Barabashova. It's partially open air markets and partially it's closed. And yes, it was big and you could find almost everything there from clothes to the spare parts. And it was destroyed literally by the Russian artillery. Tweet from our defense, um, we have 20 plus Hamas's and M270 MLRS and Mars's all remain in service. 50 plus Russian depots with weapons and ammunition exited the game. Uh, just imagine just 20 systems may destroy Russian ammunition depots and change the war. Now it's more positioned war compared to what we saw before, like a few months ago, and Russia was gaining lots of ground day by day. Now we see, obviously, they gained some of the small ground here and there, but we also now on a counterattack, and now Russia is suffering. They don't have enough forces and resources to attack on widespread territories. Uh, yeah, it's just a picture, some Russian news that Ukrainian forces cut the cable for the electrical supply. Don't trust that one. Russia deliberately uh, shut down the electrical supply for the station, but now it's been restored and now we have two of their reactors working. They are powering and supplying the other reactors and providing some electricity to consumers and also in Ukrainian territory. So good news compared to yesterday, my friends. And I hope that nothing happens to this nuclear power plant. Otherwise, it will be devastation act for Ukraine. Some of the good news, Ukraine surpassed 1 million tons of food supplies via the Black Sea. So it is impossible to supply that much on tracks. So that is why the ferries are mostly used, vessels, sorry, and ferries obviously used to transport crops and food around the world. And the Black Sea is not an exception. So at least we try to negotiate this issue and so far it is working. And my friends, I'll keep you in touch. I'll keep you updated on the situation here in Ukraine. And if you like what I do, just press the like button. It's the major support of the channel. And if you want to financially support me, there are some links below under this video. You may support me on Patreon, on PayPal, or Donatella, whichever you like. And those of you who support me, my friends, you are awesome. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are. Have a great time.